Well, I have to say we have we have somebody who you directed uh, in um, an episode who also interviewed you, uh, Miss Santina Muha. Santina. <laughs> Where are you? I see your beautiful name. There's there you is. are. Hi. How are you, buddy? Oh my God, so good to see you. You too. This is fantastic. What a reunion. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm sure everyone knows. Does everyone know our, our story? Why don't you explain it? We... I mean, she, well, Santina interviewed me and then I've directed her, but you go ahead and explain. Yeah, so. Oh my God. Okay, so one of my first jobs ever in the entertainment industry is I worked for Tiger Beat Magazine. And so I would go, I know. And so I would get to go into New York City when I lived in New Jersey and interview um, different celebrities. And um, so one day I was covering a Sweet Life of Zach and Cody event and I went and I got to interview Phil and it was really cool and he was really nice and great. And, um, and I was always like, I liked my interviewing job, but I always sort of like wanted to be on the other side of it all, right? I wanted to do the acting. So cut to 10 years or so later, I'm doing my first episode of One Day at a Time and who is directing the episode? Phil Lewis. <laughs> Isn't okay. it amazing? Now, uh, you may have to try and find those pictures because we took. I sent them to David. Don't worry. Oh, did you? Oh, great. great, yeah, great, great. I, I sent him the side by side. We'll oh, post them that. right now. Oh, that's okay. fantastic. <laughs> well, Santina is so amazing. She, not only did I enjoy being interviewed by her, but she is such a delight to direct because she is so good so knowledgeable of this industry and and so knowledgeable of the craft of acting um we had so much fun doing one day at a time and we always knew it was great and I, santina you may not know this but the executive producers would on one day at a time would always say well okay here's a funny joke well you know if so and so saying that we'll give it to santina we know she'll make it funny and we'll give ah! it to santina but that's <laughs> I love that. No, no, I didn't know that. And you know, as an actor, and I'm sure everybody in here can attest to this, you sometimes you doubt yourself, right? You wonder like, am I being, am I funny enough? Why didn't I get that line? That line is so funny. Why did they give it to so-and-so? You doubt yourself. So that's really cool to hear. Thank you, Phil. Uh, absolutely. And uh, on that point, you know, there's so many variables. There's so many different things that happen during the course of shooting a television show or shooting a movie that a lot of times, you know, for example, and I hopefully I explained this to you and to the other cast members, that if there's um, moments in a scene that you just loved and that were so great and so funny in rehearsal, they may be taken out of a script because of time, because, oh, we don't have enough time to do all of this stuff. So one of my, you know, um, uh, kind of adages or um, one thing that I'd like to tell young actors uh, is don't take this stuff personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's hard to do because as an actor, we're selling ourselves, right? If you're a soap salesperson, you, if someone doesn't like your soap, you go, okay, they don't like my soap. But if, if someone doesn't, we think doesn't like us, we go, oh no, what have we done? But it's not that at all. A lot of times they're going, you know what? Her hair may be too long for this, or her hair may be too short for this, or he may be too tall. You know, mm -hmm. all of that comes into play. Don't take it personally. And this goes for everyone who's working or wants to work. No one, I guarantee, this is one thing that I know. No one will do it like you. That's Does that right. make sense? You That's all are right. all individuals. You are very special and unique individuals. No one is going to audition. No one is going to work. No one is going to sing that song the way that you do. So own that. Make that part, say, this is me. This is who I am. And you don't have to try and be somebody else because you are special and great and wonderful the way that you are. So just know that, okay? Keep that in your head. That's, see why he's a great director to work with? Who would want to hear that every day? <laughs> and, oh, and the other thing about Phil that makes him a great director is he laughs 
every time. <laughs> oh, we appreciate, and you know, we appreciate that because when you're rehearsing for a sitcom, it's sort of like you're doing a play for the week, right? You're rehearsing the same jokes over and over and over all week. But Phil will laugh every time, and that makes you feel good because you know you don't want to ever feel like, oh, did I not say it funny that time? So he's right. a great. Yeah, he's great. Well, just know that it is genuine because Norman Lear, if you guys don't know Norman, Norman Lear created uh, uh, One Day at a Time. And uh, I know David goes back with Norman years and years and years. But um, Norman Lear created One Day at a Time and, and uh, among many other shows. But Norman always says, and he would say when he would walk on set, uh, just remember, laughter extends your life. <laughs> so, well, if anyone knows, it's him. Exactly. Life it's, extension. He's 96, I think. Yeah. I think I, he's 90, 97, I think. I think he's 98. What? Are you serious? I think he just this last month. Oh my gosh. So obviously it works, right? I know. So it. I try to I try to laugh as much as I possibly can. <laughs> okay, yes, I have some questions. My first question is for Santina. Oh. Um, Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good. How are you, Santina? Good. Thank you. Good You're welcome. You. Um, my first question for you is, how was it like working on One Day at a Time, being an um, actress with a disability? It's really cool. So one thing I really love about One Day at a Time is the fact that it's my green, my, my dressing room is accessible. It's on the first floor and I can get into my dressing room and go into craft services, you know, the kitchen, that's a very important part of set and get on and then get into, you know, when, when it's my turn to be on set, get on set and I can do everything because it's all on one floor. And I love that because sometimes I've done other jobs on location where, you know, um, maybe base camp is not accessible. And so they'll, they'll separate, separate me. And I don't want to be separate. You know, as we all know, in this field, in our industry, networking is a huge part of it. And you want to become, you know, hang out with your coworker. And that's what I do. I hang out with my co-stars all day. Me, Nikki, Mackenzie, Hanifa. Okay. Yeah, if Nikki. I can interrupt, if I can interrupt, at lunchtime, I would have to walk by Santina's dressing room to get to my dressing room. And it's like a house party going on in there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there, there's music, there's food, Santina's got it going on. Okay, it's right. true. No, it's true. I really do. I kind of host, the, because we only have maybe one or two scenes per episode as the support group. So we hang out in my dressing room all day and we talk. We, you know, Isabella will come in there when her, when she's off, Joy, uh, Justina will pop in, Rita will pop in. It's like the most, it's so cool and fun. And yeah, it's a very fun time. So I love that it's accessible. Um, and I love that my character is this, vet who you know she's in a wheelchair uh i guess we assume she was injured in you know in combat but we, we never really talk about it much if it if it helps the joke then we use it if it doesn't then we don't and that's 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 good with me i think it's okay to talk about it when it's funny but we don't have to talk about it every second and so that's i think one day at a time does a great balance with that I just want to yeah. say that you did an amazing job on the last film production for the Disability Film Challenge. It was oh, amazing. Thank I, you so I, much. I took a picture. Ooh. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember you. I and she's, she's nominated. Santina's nominated for Best Picture, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. oh, my word. I, I know nothing of this. So, David, will you, can you hit me to what's going on? This sounds really amazing. Oh, I will. I mean, it's what, www.disabilityfilmchallenge.com. They've been doing it seven years. And Santina, you were up for an award the other year as well, right? Yes, yeah, this is our two, two years in a row we were nominated for Best Film. We're really excited, my team and I. We're feeling, we feel like we're really, we're, you know, when you find people that you like to work with, keep working with them. Keep working right. with them. Yeah. Right. There were the most films this year, 87 films. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have what five days to do it something like that yes five days it was wow. insane and we did it all from we didn't leave none of not the four of us that worked on our project together left our home like we all did it from <laughs> our own apartment i in fact sat right here in front of this backdrop you'll recognize the backdrop from the film so um this is where we did it but it was so fun and so interesting and cool and it was cool to like take this thing that was happening to me during quarantine and explore it through the film and, and open up everyone else's eyes to it 
and it's getting a lot of great feedback from the feet from the disability community and from the non disabled community, which I think is important because I want to always like validate our community and make everyone feel seen and heard. And I also want to educate the non disabled community and bring them in and bridge the gap because there shouldn't sure. be a gap, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. All right, I'm going to look that up. As soon okay, as we're done here. That's neat. Congratulations. That's oh, thank neat. you. Thank All you. The films on uh, YouTube, right? The Disability mm -hmm. Film Challenge. Yeah, okay, they're all great. And they're all five minutes long and they're they're great little bite-sized pieces of talent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, good to know. Good to know. And I have one more question for Santina. Okay. Um, who is your favorite muscular actor as being in the industry? <laughs> muscular. I love um and he's Me. getting his own spin off now, David. <laughs> Come on, David. Um, <laughs> I love um, Elliot Stabler, you know, from Law & Order SVU? Yes. Yeah, and he's getting his own spinoff now, so I'm excited for that. And, um, oh, I, I one time met Channing Tatum in a, uh, at Bird's in a restaurant in L.A. We took a picture together, and he was really cool and really nice and really hot. Um, and I saw Chris Pine the other day do an interview on something, and he was super cool, like really cool. I liked his, per like, you know, sometimes you, you someone's hot, so you don't really pay attention to their personality. And then you find out, wow, they're also, <laughs> which don't do that. That's not right. But I'm guilty. I did it. And I'm now I'm happy to report he's, Chris Pine is also a cool guy besides being hot. So those are some of mine. There's so many more. I can't choose. Thanks, Cynthia. You're welcome. Okay, so my next question is for Mr. Phil Lewis. Cool, ready. Okay. Um, how is it like being married to Megan Bennett? <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic question. So my <laughs> <laughs> So here's the the reason that I laugh is that my wife, Megan, wants she doesn't like having her picture taken. Like she doesn't, she want, we're complete opposites in that way. Um, she uh, is not an actress. She's actually a chef. Um, she was a chef by trade. She went to culinary school um, and, uh, and she used to do private work. She used to cook for, um, uh, for celebrities and she would cook for directors and uh, she'd make the food and she would deliver the food. And then um, once our uh, uh, kids were born, she um, thank God for her um, uh, worked uh, with the kids, uh, or, you, know, you know, stayed at home with the kids. But when the kids started high school, I think started high school, she went back and she got her um, master's in marriage and family therapy. And then she ended up working at a place, I don't know if you guys have heard of a place called Cheerful Helpers, which is um, in uh, Koreatown. Um, and it is, uh, a, it's a, uh, it's not, they don't call it a school, a center. They call it a center uh, for kids um, on the, uh, that have emotional disorders. So um, kids that are on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum, but are, are, pretty, are more high functioning um, and so she worked there for uh, a couple of years and really enjoyed that work. Um, and then when the kids, um, uh, that must have been before the kids were in high school. And then once the kids got into high school, she was back at home because it's, that's a big transition going from junior high to high school. So she wanted to make sure she was home with the girls. So um, she's an amazing, she's the pillar. She's the rock of this, of this family. And um, it's great that because as you guys know, in working in the entertainment industry, you can have some very long hours. I'm sure some of your rehearsals and things that you guys are doing can last, seem like they last forever at least. Um, and so it's great to know that, um, that Megan is home with the girls and that uh, all of us are, all of us are well taken care of. So, um, so it's a joy. It's, uh, it'll be 24 years in December that we've been married and together almost 29. Oh, I love I know, that. I know, I, again, I don't look that old. I know, I know. <laughs> My last question for you is I know you're from, I believe it's Uganda or Ghana? I'm from, I was born in Uganda, yeah. Uganda, okay, I'm sorry. 
That's um, okay. You may not know, but I'm also from a uh, island country called Belize. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. So I can relate to some, you know, foods that you guys eat from Ghana. Uh, well, it's all it's all the same symmetrical food. Oh, okay. So, well, hopefully you can relate. I I I will tell you that the the we would have when I was only in Uganda for a very short period of time and when we when we came back to the states, I remember growing up in DC, um, we would eat a lot of Ethiopian food. Mm -hmm. And we it really, I don't know if you like Ethiopian, we, I really enjoyed Ethiopian food, but there were some times that it was so spicy that I couldn't eat it. <laughs> and I don't know if it's the same, I'm sure it's the same in Belize, right? There must be really spicy foods. My mother can eat anything. I, I, we, I could put her in a a uh, hot pepper challenge and she would win. But I can't eat all of that. The spice is too much for me. But um, uh, my brothers, I have three older brothers and they all really enjoyed um, Uganda and um, Ugandan culture and food. But I was only there for such a short period of time. But being back in the States, Ethiopian food was kind of where, where we would, you know, kind of get that taste of, uh, of the continent. That's great. Now, when uh, when did you move? How old were you when you moved to the States? So I was only, I was about a year, a year and a half. So I don't remember Uganda at all. So the backstory is that my father uh, was in the Peace Corps and um, he was a regional director in the Peace Corps. So my mom uh, traveled because my dad had to go early um, to set up um, uh, different centers there. So my mom traveled from the United States to Nigeria with three boys under the age of five. And then my dad had to stay to evacuate uh, uh, because Idi Amin was coming in. And so my mom traveled, so I was born and my mom traveled with four boys under the age of seven from hmm. Uganda to, uh, we went straight to, we went to France, we went to Paris actually. Um, so she, I don't, and she still talks to us. It's, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, so yeah, so I was only there for about a year and a half. Um, so my, I, I'm obviously an American citizen because I was born uh, uh, in the, or on U.S. soil. The hospital was on U.S. soil, um, so I, an American citizen. But um, but yeah, I, I would love to go back, uh, uh, but I haven't been back to the continent. So maybe one day. Um. So it was it was an honor interviewing you, and I thank you so much, both of you, Santina and Mr. Philip Lewis. Am I mistaken? No, that that's my that's the name that my mom calls me when she's mad at me. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Philip. Well, thank you both. Get yeah, over here, Philip. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Jennifer. Such a pleasure. You're welcome. Okay, well, going on to the next person, David. Oh, next person, I think. I think that's. I think that's it. Those two right now. Okay. <laughs> but uh, then, but we do have. Um, we do have uh, Ashley Lyles and Donovan. Now I know Donovan's been having some um, some uh, internet connection problems, but we're going to start right now with Ashley, and hopefully we'll get to Donovan as well. Thank you, David. Yes. Um, and I wanted to say to Phil Lewis that uh, I said it earlier, but I really loved you on the Wan Brothers, and I also loved Sweet Life of Zach and Cody and On Deck, and um, I wanted to know what was it like acting with um, Marlon and Sean Wan? <laughs> well, that was quite an adventure, <laughs> because I, I know when you guys rehearse a show, um, or if you're you're working um, with another actor, you're mm -hmm. hoping that they're going to say what's in the script. Well, guess yeah. what? Marlon rarely said what was in the script. <laughs> 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 so he likes to improv quite a bit. Um, and of course, once he starts going, then Sean would start mm -hmm. going, and then that would make me start going. Like, so it became this kind of crazy <laughs> improv game that we would do, but it was so much fun. We had a great time. Um, I'm sure I, I, I don't have any, oh, maybe there's some pictures on my phone. I could send David some pictures of 
my hair being slicked down and my gold tooth and my yeah I remember that I remember that when I was watching it yeah so it was so much fun to play and so much fun to do and then um uh uh, small world. Um, then I got to direct Marlon in his show for NBC. The show was called Marlon, and I yeah. directed yeah about half of those episodes. So we got to work together again. But I it was did so not much, know that. Yeah, isn't that neat? Um, so it was so much fun um, because you know Marlon really teaches you. I don't know if you guys do. I'm sure David uh, um, does this in one of his areas of expertise is improvisation games and improv. Um, it's such a great way for actors to to kind of learn and enjoy comedy. Uh, you know, Phil, I actually time. taught an improv uh, workshop for David for Meet the Biz because I do improv over at the Upright Citizens Brigade. So oh, I, you're a UBC. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yep. Wow. So I went. I actually, oh, I think UCB. Jennifer was there. Yeah, used to be. I think you were there, right? And I don't remember. I think um, a few people. It was really fun. But I agree, oh. improv is is great. It's a great. Yeah. To have because it helps take away some of the panic of if you drop a line or if your co-star drops a line yeah you know? it, exactly exactly so yeah marlon and sean taught me a lot about about improvisation so it was so much fun to to work with them yeah they're a lot of fun <laughs> i remember yeah. i remember Cynthia oh. talking about a guy with their shirt off <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. Maybe is that why you asked me that question today? <laughs> <laughs> and I also wanted to know if I can, um, at the end, if I can take a picture, uh, like a group picture. I, I would love that. Hey, why not yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay it's a uh, picture break time. That's right. Great. Yeah, I'm getting closer in. <laughs> Buddy position, Donovan, smile or not. <laughs> Wait, uh, um, I can't do it from my computer, so can I do it from my phone? Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Say, must it must be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were gonna say. Do we get it? I want a picture yeah, too. How do you do it? Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, Donovan. Donovan. Okay, Donovan. Hi. Oh my God. I know the internet is wacky for you. It is. Um. So like maybe me again, uh, I have a question too. First question. I know it was I was like I know it was a movie that I'm like yeah, we're actually there. I know that story the movie portrayed as a slave, what was that experience? Like what was the name of that movie? All right. I I I actually got that. You <laughs> sent it to me. Um I know that you were in a movie portrayed as a slave. What was that experience like? Oh, that's a great, great question. So I did a movie called um, Brother Future. And I, I'm sure, uh, you might be able to see it on YouTube, but I'm not sure. But what it was, was a time travel piece. Um, and what happens is I'm a, a kid who doesn't care about his past. He just wants to kind of hustle. And um, it's, uh, you know, obviously make believe being time travel. But um, what happens is I get transported. I get hit by a car. I'm running across the street. I get hit by a car. And when I land um, and wake up from being hit by the car, I'm in 1822, the year 1822 in Charleston, South Carolina. So if you, of course, know your history, in 1822 in Charleston, South Carolina, slavery existed. So I am immediately picked up by slave catchers and sold into slavery. So I did have to play a slave. Um, and it was, it's a great question, Donovan, because it was a really hard uh, role to do because 
of the subject matter. Um, so I did a lot of research on, um, you know, I certainly, you know, knew a lot and, and learned a lot about slavery in school, but I had to do more research about what it was like in that time period. It was 1822, Charleston. Um, I meet an insurrectionist named Denmark VC. So I went and um, did research on Denmark VC. Um, but it was, uh, you know, going home every night. Uh, I felt a sense of gratitude that um, that so many people before me had had gone through such a horrible tragedy, but had worked so hard to get us to where we are today. And you know, so I was I was filled with gratitude when I would be able to walk on the street and 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 not be judged. And um, I was able to you know stay in a hotel in a nice room and have air conditioning. All of those things that we kind of take for granted. When I was working on that, you know, you, they're kind of out of your head because you're really immersed in the character. Um, but it also showed me that, you know, in looking back on that piece, if we take that in what's happening now, there's still, we still have a ways to go. Um, and, you know, we want everyone to be treated equally and we don't want people to be judged by uh, uh, either a, a disability or the color of their skin or their religion, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some leadership that will say, hey, we're all people and we're all here together. And for me, um, you know, there, there is, I'm not a religious person, but um, one of the commandments is do unto others as, as you would have done unto you. And I really believe that. I think that you can go a long way with treating other people the way you would want to be treated. Um, that's really kind of my motto. So if I'm walking up to a door, hey, I would love for someone to hold the door for me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hold the door for that person. Or uh, does someone need a hand with their bags? Hey, let me help you. It's just kind of being kind of being nice. But I say all that to say that there, you know, too many people are uh, judge us for what we look like, right? And I just, uh, I was never taught to do that. Um, and so hopefully we're, we're getting to a place where people aren't judging us for what we look like. That as Martin Luther King said, uh, people will judge us by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And I can expound on that and say, and not because uh, we may be, we may have a disability. Um, you know, hopefully they will judge us for who we are. But it was, a, I thank you for bringing that up because it was a very, we actually shot on a, um, we, we were on a real plantation, obviously not a working plantation, but they would do tours of the plantation. Um, and we shot on a real plant so we could see where the slave quarters were and where the master's house was. It was really interesting and kind of daunting at the same time. Uh, but thank you so much, Donovan, for, for watching that and, and asking about that. And that's cool. That's great. That's great. So question. that's what the documentary I did is about um, judging people not based on their thing. So we, I took advantage of the the time period. Like right now, you're looking at me. You don't know I'm in a wheelchair, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm having this unique experience right now in quarantine that I'm meeting people and they don't know I'm in a wheelchair from the beginning. Wow. And so they're yeah. getting to know me as a person before they get to know me as a person in a wheelchair, which never happens. So we right. explored that in the doc. And I th and that's when I, and the end, it's sort of like the thesis of it is, this is what we should be doing for everyone. We should yeah, be judging that's... them based on getting to know them before we say, oh, this is the the black one, the gay one, exactly. the one in the wheelchair, whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. Love that. Well, I have a question for, since we do have a, a Santina here, and Phil, we'll start with Santina. Same question to both of you. Okay. So how, how do you center yourself? How do you keep positive? Well, um, I have just keep always remind myself that whatever is happening will pass. You know, I've been through all kinds of things in my life, and I still am here, and I still have good days. Uh, and I still have bad days, right? And and both end, the good days end too, you know, and, and the bad days end. So um, I try to just stay as present as I can be in the moment. Hey, if something happens that makes me sad, I cry, I scream, whatever I need to do, not scream at anybody, please. 
but I, I get, I get my frustration out. Um, I, I'm in therapy. I talk to my therapist. I do what I need to do to deal with what's happening. Um, let myself feel the feelings and then you got to move on, right? You got to move on to the next thing because there's so much around the corner and one failure. I mean, look what I said when I interviewed Phil so many years ago, there, I was wishing that I was on the other side of that interview. And here I am right now on the other side of that interview, right <laughs> alongside Phil. And I didn't know that back then. So if I was, if I went home sad and kicked myself for not being the one being interviewed, it would a waste of my energy because I ended up here anyway, you know? So just remember that nothing is permanent and um, live in the moment, feel your feelings, and then just like move on to the next. And also be, take whatever you can control because there's so much you can't control, focus on that. So, you know, if you didn't get cast in that movie, that sucks. But you know what? Write a movie that you are the star of, that you can control. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, that, I literally will, will piggyback on that. It, for me, it is about living in the present moment. Um, I realized that there are two things that I cannot control. The past and the future. <laughs> so what do I have? I have the present moment. Uh, and so that is, is, is what I think is extremely important. And I think it can be hard sometimes, like Santini's saying, you know, you, we all have good days and bad days. Um, it's for me trying to make the bad, I try to live my life as a win-win. So if it's something that's bad, trying to find the good in that, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm at a win-win. So if it's something that, that happens then I can say, okay, I can learn from this experience. And because I've learned something from this experience, then I can try and turn it into a positive experience. And that makes my life a win-win. So it really is being in the moment. And my big catchphrase that my girls hear me say, quite or catch word, that my girls hear me say almost daily is gratitude. Mm -hmm. I am grateful every morning when I wake up, I have another 24 hours, right? When I wake up, I put one foot on the floor and I say, thank, and I put the other foot on the floor and I say, you, thank you, because I have another day. And it's really a gift. I have another day. Now, granted, it may be a hard day, maybe things that I have to do throughout the day, but I'm grateful that I'm able to be able to do those things. You know, I, I talked to a friend of mine um, and uh, he was talking about, he has, uh, a, a huge dog and the dog's kind of running amok and the dog's always in the backyard messing up the backyard and he says and I'm out there cleaning up after the dog and he he was so upset that he was cleaning up after the dog and I said wait a second think about it how about being grateful that you have a dog how about being grateful that you have a yard to clean up <laughs> like that's really great like yeah you not everybody wants to clean up after their dog but Hey, I can go. Wait a second. I have a, I have, I have to look at the gratitude and be grateful. So the one thing that I ask myself is, uh, am I happy because things are going right, or are things going right because I'm happy? And that's what I have to ask myself. If I can stay happy, if I can stay in a good mood, things seem to go pretty well. So that's what I try to do. So capitalizing off what Santina said, really being in the present moment, you know, and like, like she said, share those feelings when you don't feel, because you don't want to bottle stuff up. So share those feelings with someone if you're feeling in a negative space. Make sure you get them out. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a negative space and you're in, like for instance, when I filmed my movie for the Disability Film Challenge, I Can, um, believe it or not, I was supposed to cry. And I couldn't cry because I was like so happy, so in the moment of being happy that I couldn't cry. And so I had to physically try to put myself in the space of sadness. So how do you do that when you're happy? Santina, you may want to answer that because you, you, you're on that side of the camera more than I am, but I can chime in when you're done. Well, you know, I'll say that I too, Jennifer, have a, a hard time crying on command. It's not easy. 
And um, I had to cry for a movie once and I was, before my scene, I was locked myself in my room and I put in my earphones and I listened to this song that reminds me of my stepdad that always makes me cry. And I'm like, why am I I'm torturing myself right now? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like torturing myself. But um, I think the best thing to do is just really uh, try to connect with the character. Just try, that's, that's really what you can do is try to really connect, put yourself into the character's shoes. If the script calls for crying then there's, there's obviously something going on with that character. And so, yeah, just try to, as much as you can, connect with the character in that moment, I think. Yeah. What about you, Phil? What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's really hard. I can't do it either. I cannot do it. So you guys um, may remember the, um, the last episode of Sweet Life on Deck. So, so I'll tell you a little story about that. So what happened was there's the moment where I have to say goodbye to Brenda, uh, to London. And during rehearsal, the two of us never, we didn't really rehearse that moment. And we were both kind of afraid to get into that space because it was the last, we knew this was going to be the last time that we were going to do this together uh, on this show. So we were both kind of afraid. So we would kind of brush it off. Okay, and this is when she says goodbye and I say goodbye and I answer the phone and it's her and okay, and then we move on. Well, we had to actually do it for the network run through. So we had to actually perform it. And what you saw on camera is what, you, what, we, what happened in the network run through. When we got to that moment, and I'm getting choked up now. Mm -hmm. When we got to that moment, we both <laughs> burst into tears. <laughs> because we and we couldn't do the scene and we just hugged each other and there's 60 people standing around but we because we had built up such a relationship over you know about seven years um you know we saw each other more than we were seeing some of our family members um that it was really hard to get through and that's what happened when we actually shot it um we both burst into tears so that was a connection because we were so close to each other. And if I had to cry on camera again, I'd probably go back to that. <laughs> I would probably think about that moment. Um, but Santina did something that another actress that I worked with, I don't know if you guys ever saw uh, a show called No Good Nick on, um, on Netflix. Uh, it's a neat show. It's kind of a fun show. But um, the young lady who played the lead in that show, she would put on headphones and listen to something that would just kind of get her in the mood. Mm. But believe me, no one expects you. And if a director says you have to cry, not really a director that's worth their weight in salt. No one expects you to get to a place emotionally if you can't do that. I would understand that. I would say, hey, I'm if, like Santina saying, if you feel the emotion of the character, that's enough physical tears. We could actually manufacture those. And there have been times where I've had manufactured tears where they 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 uh, blow a little menthol in your eyes mm -hmm. and you're able to cry um you just start your eyes start wandering so <laughs> so don't worry what we're doing as actors <laughs> is we're portraying the image of reality we don't expect you to you know you, you know you don't have to go as deep as you think you may and it also happens the other way where you're doing a comedy but you know I, when we were doing sweet life one of our dogs uh, passed away <laughs> Uh, one of the Aww. girls' little doggies passed away. It was so sad, but I had to go to work and be funny. So it was like, it's, you know, it, you kind of, it's just kind of dealing with it uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. Well, I just want to, I want to thank you all for being here, um, for coming today, uh, Ranjani and BJ uh, and Donovan. Uh, oh, and Ashley, and thank you, Santina, for 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 showing up. Um, what a surprise! So what dinner cool. time! Yeah, <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> and and of course, Phil Lewis. <laughs> Must be so, naked. Okay, so Just I'm, I'm, me. I'm old, but uh, can someone tell me how to take a picture? Can I take a picture of all of us together? Sure, sure, sure. Do I have there to do it on my, my phone? Well, you could do it on your phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go that. ahead. I'll do I'll that. Count of three. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three.